back to City and State TV. I'm Morgan Pacma here at City and State's SOMOS 2014 hub in the Condado Hilton in beautiful San Juan, Puerto Rico. I'm pleased to be joined now by Assemblywoman-elect Rebecca Seawright from the Upper East Side of Manhattan. Assemblywoman-elect, I'm gonna call you Assemblywoman just for ease. Congratulations, thank you for being here. Well, thank you. It's a wonderful conference, and I'm just so honored to be here and uh, be attending some just fabulous workshops and panels, and uh, so thank you very much for having me. You know, one of our great objectives in our Road to SOMO series and our coverage here was to make sure that it wasn't just going to be a bunch of talk, but that we would see substantive takeaways from this conference. What have you seen so far that really impressed you that you felt was really meaningful what have been your takeaways from this conference well that's an excellent question i just attended this afternoon such a motivational workshop with the mayor of san juan and city council member uh, rosie mendez as well as melissa mark Vetterito, the new york city council speaker on lgbt issues and marriage equality is something they don't have in puerto rico and so by the end of the workshop, an 11 o'clock press conference was planned tomorrow to talk about how New York can be helpful to Puerto Rico in passing marriage equality and the things that worked in New York and how it translates or could potentially translate here in Puerto Rico. And they're so lucky to have a fabulous mayor right here in San Juan that supports LGBT rights. Yeah, uh, speaker Mark Viverito wrote an op-ed in our, uh, our special issue for this conference pushing for marriage equality. I mean, what as an, as an elected official in New York State do you feel like you can do to try to help move the needle here to make uh, Puerto Rico embrace marriage equality? Well, I think certainly writing a letter to the governor of Puerto Rico, encouraging him to reconsider his position, um, sharing stories of, of things in New York among people that were discriminated against and having him try to relate that to people that are being discriminated against right now as we speak in Puerto Rico. So yeah. I'm just happy to be a part of this press conference that's being planned tomorrow. And as chair of the board of the Feminist Press, I think we might have a, a likely book in the making on the history of LGBT rights in Puerto Rico. Yeah, oh, that's fascinating. And, you know, with uh, Alejandro Garcia Padilla, the governor, he is of the PPD, but he's essentially a Democrat in the mainland. And just like the governor, just like President Obama's views on marriage equality have evolved over time, perhaps the governor is going to evolve too if he's prodded in that direction. You know, it's interesting you talked about Mayor Carmen Yulín here uh, from San Juan. Um, what would have been your impressions about her? You know, it's, it's interesting that Puerto Rico has had a female governor. We've never had one. They've had three uh, female mayors of San Juan. I mean, what, what was your take of, of, about Carmen Yulín being that you have been such a great advocate for women's rights? She dynamic, she's smart, she's fabulous, and she is right on target. I think she's going to go uh, to really, really higher places, much higher than mayor, and I am excited to have met her and support her in the future in whatever endeavor she takes on, because she is fabulous. And I've seen her a lot this conference, and every single speech she's given, she's talked about women's equality and women's rights, and uh, it's just very inspirational to to see her in action as the mayor of San Juan. What, 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 do you, what is your reasoning? Why do you think that we haven't had a female governor in New York State, a female mayor in New York City? What do you think is the reason? That's interesting. I think money is something that holds women back, juggling family demands, a job and a career, and being able to raise the money. I know in my own race early on I was told you know, running against three very well-financed men in the primary, that money was going to be a big issue, and we proved them wrong, and I'm wearing a button today from Emily's List, Early Money is Like Yeast, um, that supports women candidates with, with early money. So I think um, definitely the ability to raise the money is an issue, because we certainly have qualified, talented women out there. And, and obviously this is a, a very, must be an incredible time for you. You're about to become, you have been elected, you're about to be sworn in as an elected official. I mean, now that you've accomplished such a, a difficult job, you, you climb to the top of this, at least this plateau, what are you hoping above all to accomplish in office? That's a great question. One of the things that I've been campaigning on for the last six months is more affordable housing for the Upper East Side and Roosevelt Island 
to pass the women's equality bill, and to carry the fight to the state level against the waste transfer station, which is very controversial on East 91st Street in Yorkville in Manhattan. And I know if I remember correctly, you're from Yorkville. I am. I grew up on 91st Street, actually, and, and so I feel very strongly about it. And my, my daughter goes to school on 91st Street, so... Oh, so that, you're a constituent. I, I, that is a very important issue for me personally. I won't right. say where I stand on that. Uh -huh. um, you know, I, and um, talking about housing, talking about obviously affordability, all the rent regulations that are of so much importance to the people of New York City are, are expiring this year. That's going to be an enormous fight that you are walking into. I mean, what, what is your expectation? What, what, are, what are your principal goals in, in trying to recraft our rent laws in New York, in New York State? I think we need to tie the expiration of the rent laws to the adoption of the state budget in Albany so that we have some leverage. We need to fight for more of the middle income people on the Upper East Side. We need to hold our developers accountable as they build these multi-million dollar apartments um, in these high-rise buildings. We have mom and pop stores that are being demolished in the neighborhood and uh, we need more enforcement and more accountability. Well, Assemblywoman-elect Rebecca Seawright, best of luck to you in Albany, and we look forward to seeing how this first session goes for Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate Pleasure. it. Pleasure.